Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to STL. Yes, yes, you know what? I know we're not in the normal space that we normally are, but we came home for the holidays to visit family completely safely. Guys, thank you for coming back and, and thank you for sticking it out with us. Guys, it is our last video of 2020 and we couldn't have ended it on a higher note. I'm so excited for this guest you're about to see. But honestly, before we get there, I just wanted to say good job. Congratulations on getting through 2020. Let's have a great 2021. Um, I, I think there's some hope on the way and thank you to all of our frontline service workers, our, our doctors, our healthcare workers, all of you, thank you so much. Um, I, I know even right now it, it's still pretty insane. But guys, we're doing our last video of 2020. Thank you for sticking it out with us. I'm, I, I thank you for staying here. Um, I'm just, I'm just going on now, but guys, I am so ready. Let's get the last theme song, the last music, last time in 2020. Roll that intro. Thank you for staying with us, guys. All right, this guy, he's a comedian. He's an actor. He just released a new short film where he's starring in called Dumps. We talk about it in the interview. We talk about life in general during quarantine and how, how it is being a, a comedian in, in this, this medium, right? I mean, it's hard. Um, but guys, I'm so excited to introduce you to Noah Kopfer. Hey guys, guys, I have him here. Our first comedian on the show. Noah, what is up? How are we doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm stoked to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on here, dude. I'm, I'm stoked to just pick your brain. You know what? I've been thinking about it all day. You know what? Just picking your brain about being a comedian right now. Do your friends like kind of sometimes like are scared to maybe do something around you like because they think that maybe their um their action will be the butt end of a joke <laughs> now um, that, now now, now yeah. that's like a bigger question but i was just i was thinking about that i was like i don't know if i had a really like my best friend was a comedian i i feel like i'm gonna be the a lot of his jokes yeah, no no i i get that i think not as much with like my friends i, I mean maybe sometimes it'll happen like if we're in a if we're like in a scenario and something something crazy happens, a lot of times people be like excited, like I'll 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 be in that bit. It's more like my family that is like, oh gosh, what bits are we in? Because they're not around me all the time. And then by the time they've seen the joke, I've already worked it out. It's already where I want it to be. And they're like, how many people have you done this joke in front of? And I'm like, a lot. I've done it in front of a lot of people. Um, so I've had that definitely with like my parents for sure. Uh, my my family um, they're good sports about it but they're always like you know my, my dad it's kind of like the thing 
I don't know. My dad will always be like, um, oh, I guess that's going to end up in one of your bits or something like that. But it's sometimes when someone does that, because they did that, it's not going to happen anymore. Like, have you ever been like hanging out with someone and you're like, oh, guys, we're never going to forget this moment. And then you're like, well, now we are because you said that. Like, it's, yeah. it's just like it takes you out of it. And that's what it is sometimes. If like, my, like if one of them is like, oh, yeah, like this is going to be a bit. I'm like, well, uh, now we're aware of it and I don't want to <laughs> make it a bit anymore. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. Okay. Well, you're also okay. So you're also a comedian. We've gotten that. You you have a podcast, correct? Mm -hmm. And and you're a TikToker now. I've been watching some of those. What else can't you do? Is a question. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> a lot of push-ups. I can't do a lot of push-ups, but I'm a lot working of on that. I respect that. See, it's a, it's a constant <laughs> grind. How did this all start? How did Noah become where he is right now? <laughs> um, time to go back in time um i guess i don't know growing up i've always been a very like energetic goofball kind of person um i get that from my parents a lot uh, just their goofball energies um I, you know I, I was always watching movies growing up as a kid i i started acting i think in middle school just as like an after school um activity i was doing sports as well but um that's when i started like performing and uh yeah, it was just something I, I had the energy for it. My parents were excited to put me in it. They had done drama too, um, not, you know, professionally, but just in school. And uh, so it was something that I think they were excited that I had a passion for. And so I did it through middle school. And then the high school was more of when I started to take it seriously. And it really became, you know, like my passion, something I really, really enjoy. And then, you know, towards the end of high school, it was like, okay, well, this is what I want my career to be. Like, I, I, I it kind of crossed the line from going to, oh, this is something I want to do forever. In addition to something else, it then became, oh, this is like what I want to do, what I want to be. Like, this is who I am. And I, I feel that. And then, you know, as soon as I uh, graduated high school, I went to the academy um, for two years and then finished that and just been auditioning, living performer life since. Hey, there we go. Do you remember your first role in middle school? What, do you remember that? Uh, yeah. I think, well, my first role ever, I was in like a church play and I was like a sheep, I think. My <laughs> mom made the costume. Um, she put a lot of detail into it. I gave her a ton of props for that. Uh, I do. I think I was a sheep or a lamb or something. When did you start comedy too within all this, like within the uh, acting? So comedy is interesting because the, what I say now is like, I love performing and through going to acting school, I figured out that my favorite method of performing is comedy and that, you know, I've always loved performing. I've always loved, you know, put, putting on a show and having that kind of energy, but I think stand up was the way that really speaks to me and is like who I really am. Um, and, you know, it, I didn't do stand-up um, at all when I was living in Arizona. I just, the there's only, like, one kind of big comedy club in my hometown, and it's 21 Up. So I was just mm -hmm. never able to go there. But, you know, growing up, I, always, I, I think the first comedian that I, like, really, really fell in love with was, like, Jeff Dunham. Just his, you know, I, I, I had his um, VHSs that I would put oh, there we uh, go. into the TV that I would watch. And I thought he was so funny. And then, um, you know, I went to, to the Academy. And still moved out to LA. I was like, you know, there's some big comedy clubs out here. I'm excited to to, to watch some stand up. And um, I took uh, so uh, Adam Chambers, who's now like you know one of my best friends in the world. Um, yeah. I was he was never my teacher, but he's directed me a bunch. And the first um, the first exam play I ever had, he was my director, and um, he asked me to tell like he was just like we had a, a free moment in the class he's like well tell me what's the grossest thing that's ever happened to you and i told him this story and uh he was like you need to do stand-up you need to try doing stand-up he's like i think you'd be insane at it um and so i did it at his theater loft and uh as, as soon as i did stand up for the first time i was like oh this is the most addicting thing on the planet i never want to not do this and then oh. since then, it's been, you know, it's, it's been great. Like, it, um, you know, this year has been tough, but um, yeah. it's been the thing that's 
you know, been, it's my favorite thing to do. Like I can't imagine my life without stand up. Oh, that's awesome. There was just a new film, short film dumps that's on YouTube right now. Go watch it. Can you give us a small little summary so people can go run and go check it out after this video? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, um, so it's called dumps. It's a, a short film, um, that, uh, I was a part of with so many of my, my friends um, with a great team. And it's pretty much about uh, a guy named Andy who is um, depressed and he's uh, decided to take his own life by, um, you know, bringing a a toaster in the bathtub. Um, But uh, he ends up having to use the bathroom. He gets stuck on the toilet and uh, the whole short is him navigating uh, how he's trying to get off this toilet while the water's rising in the room. He's got the toaster plugged in. So it is, um, it's a, it's a dark comedy. And uh, I just did a, a, yeah, I mean, so that's pretty much the story. It's navigating his relationships to find out how he's going to get help to get out of this situation. And it's not just, you know, this immediate situation. It's like how he's going to get help, who he's reaching out to. It's that that's the big thing about it is reaching out and um, all that. And, you know, I talked about this in a live with the, the director, Boris, um, you know, because it is a very sensitive subject, uh, depression, suicide. Um, and, you know, when it comes to comedies, especially dark comedies, you're, tip, you're tiptoeing a line. But what I'm really proud of, of this short is that it's, you know, by no means at all um, making light of it. If anything, it's just showing that, um, you know, there, people are going through things you may not even know, and it all it takes is, is reaching out. And there's going to be people there um, who love you and who want to help you. You just have to reach out and you have to, to be there. Um, so it's a, it's a really, really powerful um, yeah. script, has funny moments, but um, I just love how much heart it has. Yeah, no, it, it, it's a it's a great film. You need to go check it out after this video. And that was a another follow up question. After that was how important do you not only think it is to have open conversations about mental health, especially now during a pandemic when it when we've all seen statistics on depression have been through the roof. But not only yeah. have open conversations, but also make art about it or to to just raise more awareness yeah i mean i think i think it's it's so important it's very it, it's necessary i mean i i think it's you see so much of the craziness that's going on in the world and you kind of push it back and you go well there's other crazier stuff going on you just bottle 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 and then that's that's not healthy at all you have to you have to reach out you have to you know you can only tell some people so many times like this is what you got to do this is what you got to do but at the end of the day it's just however you feel you need to be happy with what's going on with yourself with your brain I mean you're with your own brain 100% of the time and however it is navigating how to make yourself happy with that brain that you've got um, is really really important that's something I'm navigating right now I think uh, so many people are navigating right now is um, how to how to deal with everything that's going on but you know, like I said, describing the short, but it's just the truth is there's, there's always going to be people out there who love you, who care about you, who want what's best for you. Um, You got to want what's best for you too. And um, you know, it's, and it's no small task at all. It's not, it's not easy at all, but I think the best thing to think about is that any step is a step in the right direction. You know, like any, any little thing you can do to be like, I've been doing a lot of meditating, like I, for the past couple of weeks, every day I wake up and I meditate and that's, you know, is that the answer to everything? No, but it's something that grounds me where I'm at and it helps me. So I think it's really important for people to, to navigate where their brain is at and give themselves a break to, and to create too. I mean, that's so, Mm -hmm. if you have it all up in here get it out, write it down. It doesn't have to be funny. It doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to make money off of it, but if it's in here, write it down, create it into something. So one, you make something creative, but two, it also doesn't have to stay in here. You can get it out, translate it. And then you'll be surprised with those honest things, how many people relate and they'll, um, you know, they'll connect with it. Um, And then you've just got more of a community. 
I, I feel like you're the type of person and I create your own opportunities and just is, is constantly creating new things for yourself. How important do you think that is in this industry? Because I feel like so many times, a lot of people think like, if I, if I wait, it will happen. If I just wait on what I have, I swear like something's going to mm-hmm. happen, but I feel like there's more to it. And, and I was, I was going to want, I wanted your insight on that. I think now, now of all times, it, you have more power than you think in creating those things. I mean, when you think about even people our age who are, what, what they're watching, they're not always, I mean, we have no opportunities to go to the movie theaters right now. So waiting for auditions isn't really a thing to bank on. You know, you, you've, got, you've got a camera on your phone, make something, you know, you can write something down, do it, just create. And you have, you have all these ways to do that. And, you know, you don't have to ask permission for any of those. You don't have to wait for someone's go ahead. If you're doing a group project, um, you know, you've got your friends that you want to work with. There's so much of an opportunity to create and, and, and make things that's so easy now. And that's also in demand. I mean, everybody's sitting, waiting at home. So, yeah, I mean, I, I am very much like if you want to do something, like make it happen, make it make it happen the best way that you can make it happen, Just because that's how people see things that you do, and they go, oh, well, I want you to do this, and it kind of stacks on top of each other. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are like, well, I'm gonna wait for the big thing to come around. Um, it's not if you're not doing anything. Um, that's not how you're going to meet people. You're not going to make like, you're not going to, you know, go to a party or something and be like, Oh, I met this person. I'm the star of like a giant blockbuster movie. It's not how it works. Like you do projects, you work with people, you, you build a a community of people who likes doing things and likes making things. And then everybody in that community branches out. And then when they do something, they'll reach right back in. I mean, there's, um, you know, it's, it's just creating that community and working with people that you want to work with. And that's the best thing. I mean, with dumps, that's probably going to be one of my favorite things I'll ever do in my life because the whole crew and the cast is everybody that I loved and I really cared about and all making something that we're so excited to be a part of. And, you know, I've worked with those people a bunch of times since I was at ADA. Like I met a lot of them there and through that, we're all doing things together. And I think it's important not to uh, underestimate the power that you have with just the friends that you make, mm-hmm. you know, you have them create things that you want to create and, you know, but, you know, do it well, <laughs> you know, don't, yeah. don't just kind of be like, Oh, I need, I need to do this because I need to show people I'm doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Then it's, then it's got no heart to it. Do, do the things that make you happy and the things that you want to share with people. Not that you think, Oh, somebody will want to see this. It's, this is what I want somebody to see. This is what I, I made this. I hope you like it. And I, I think, you know, yeah, that's just another way to yeah. make it happen. No, definitely. Um, and, and there's always one, one question I like to ask every guest that comes on this show. What is one piece of advice you have for creators and artists around the world right now during this time living in uh, this pandemic? Just be, be here be here and whatever comes, comes. Don't, don't, yeah, cut yourself some slack and don't be angry at yourself for not doing things. Just be here and then that's when the stuff's gonna come. Don't, don't set up roadblocks for yourself. The world's already doing that right now for all of us. Just be here and um, you're a creative person so your creativity is gonna come regardless, it's a part of you. So don't try and force it out of your body, just let it come out. True. Wow. No, see, that's simple. Simply put, that's, that's <laughs> perfect. Um, okay. And in the last couple of moments, minutes, I like to give to um, our guests here. Where can we find more of Noah? Everyone is going to go check out dumps on YouTube, but where can we yes. find more of you? Where can we see more of you? Um, well, I would say I'm the most active on my Instagram. Um, if I'm doing virtual shows or that kind of stuff, I usually put uh, the links to everything are in my bio um that and tiktok i'm on tiktok as well we go. <laughs> um i don't care what anybody says that app is so much fun yeah. um <laughs> yeah tiktok tiktok and instagram uh really is like the main spots oh uh, also i'm starting to stream on twitch so 
uh, my Twitch is uh, the Goose Boy. That's uh, that's uh, might be starting uh, uh, another podcast up soon. Probably going to be bringing back the return of unsafe words with Ooh, my boy Adam go. James. So, hey. uh, we'll 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 see. But yeah, just uh, definitely uh, my Instagram is where I post about pretty much everything that's going on. Awesome. Yeah. Go give them a follow, everyone. Noah, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, dude. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. All right, guys. That was episode 14 in the books. Thank you for being here. And always remember, it's a good day. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Hey, you got to the end of the video. How are we doing? All this is, is I really want you to subscribe. I want you to go watch our other artists on STL. And let me know what you think. Please reach out to me. I want to talk to more people. Please. I love you guys. And always remember... It's a good day to have a good day.